Half a day and good morning, Guam. I'm Tim McHenry, and here is your morning update. The Guam Veterans Cemetery had their water cut off early yesterday morning due to an outstanding $184,000 balance. According to Guam Waterworks Authority spokeswoman Heidi Ballendorf, the bill got to that amount because of old leaking water lines at the cemetery, which she says has been an ongoing issue since 2012. Ballendorf explains that those lines need to be replaced, and GWA has advised them to do so. She also says that in the past, GWA has tried to terminate services, but was prevented from doing so by Navy contractor DZSP-21 because the meter was not a GWA meter, but owned by the Navy. On Friday, Ballendorf confirmed that the Guam Veterans Office, Veterans Affairs Office rather paid $40,000, but since they didn't have a payment plan going forward, a $40,000 payment wasn't going to cut it, given their track record of non-payment. As of 2 p.m. on Friday, Boundorf says the Guam VAO paid $80,000 and water was reconnected to the Veterans Cemetery. However, that still leaves the Guam VAO with an outstanding balance of about $60,000. According to a release from the governor's office, the Guam VAO recently completed repairs to seven leaking water pipes at the Veterans Cemetery. VAO Administrator Martin Manglotnia says he worked with the staff to locate the leaks and were able to make necessary repairs so that their monthly water bill should decrease. Manglotnia will also be working with GWA to create a payment plan for the remainder of the balance. MPNC received reports that at least one investigator at the Attorney General's office may not be post commission certified as a peace officer, which is required by law. The Attorney General's office responded to our inquiry, saying they are aware of the post commission guidelines and are working to ensure these guidelines are followed. However, they could neither confirm nor deny whether this employee was post commission certified. A source says the employee in question was a former process officer who was then promoted to the position of investigator just in the last few months. Staffing patterns for the AG's office confirm that this particular employee was a process officer during the third quarter of fiscal year 2015, then became an investigator in the fourth quarter of FY15. By law, all law enforcement officials must have a nationally recognized certification under their belt in order to qualify for the job. It's not clear if this position was posted in a job announcement for the public to be able to apply. And the National Office Supply in Saipan will have to pay over $30,000 in back wages for violating Fair Labor Standard Act regulations, according to a release from the U.S. Department of Labor. The release states that the office supply store was deducting employees' wages for cash register shortages, resulting in earnings falling below minimum wage. In addition, the company was cited for failing to pay some employees for overtime and other hours worked. National Office Supply Saipan, as a result, has agreed to pay $30,000, $995, rather, back to nine employees. U.S. Department of Labor Director of Wage and Hour Division Terrence Trotter said, quote, other employers should take note of this investigation and what these violations could mean for their businesses. It's important that they know and follow the law when it comes to making any deductions from wages and counting and recording actual hours of work, end quote. You can read the full release online at PacificNewsCenter.com. And that's it for the morning update. Remember to stay tuned in to PNC for hourly updates on Typhoon Info. As always, have a good morning, Guam.